Hello. I was just out here tinkering. I modified this pattern a little bit. I put a piece of wood on here for a thumb screw boss so I can lock it onto the spindle a little easier. I've got it all ready to go. Build up nice fillets in the corners for bond with bondo and stuff or spot putty. It's nice and smooth. So things should be ready to pour or ready to cast. Get the sand molar cleaned off real quick and get it all filled up. You probably hear the rain pouring. It's surprisingly it's 70 degrees out in January in Ohio, but it's raining as usual. Tomorrow is supposed to be nice, so I'm planning on pouring then. But it's going to be cooler. So, ram the molds up now while it's warm out. Yeah. Let's go get this started. Now for the fun part. Got to mold up enough sand to fill up this thing. Which is heavy on its own. One of these days I gotta make a smaller flask for doing stuff like this because it just eats a lot of sand and it doesn't use a space that wisely. But it works. Just two by fours, plenty of strength for those, and just some runner boards running around the inside to keep the sand locked in on both sides. Are you guys wondering what the sand molar was actually for? Here, I'll bring you over. Normally, when you want to do casting with the green sand, you have to add water to it, let it set for a few days to let the water absorb in, mull it up by hand, Just give it a few more days to set, mix it up some more and then you might be able to use it. And what it does, it mixes all the water, the sand, the clay, everything all together, it smashes it together, fluffs it up, and keeps repeating that. What would take it manual? Manual would probably take about a week to get it ready to make a mold. This does it in about five to ten minutes. So when I want to cast, I come out, throw the stuff in the sand molar, add water. It runs for that, and yeah. As you can see, the sand is getting darker and darker from the water being filled in. You see the little white specks in there that are still dry, but they're getting smashed and opened up. Gets rid of all the clumps in it. Makes it ready to use. Makes the sand like brand new. Thing. 
as you can see the sand came out really nice and fluffy it's almost like kinetic sand almost that fun sand you see in the, you should see in stores it's just it just flows but at the same time it when you pack it in it really packs in hard it turns almost like rock which makes it really easy to make molds with that's why I want I use a sand molder Just build this one up flat, set the pattern on, fill it up in here, put it on with the screws in it, lock the core in place. Usually you want to fill it up so that it is about a third of the way, then ram it up, another third. Ram it up. Since I'm just doing the bottom here, I'm just doing one or two passes, so it doesn't matter. My sand rammer has three rounded sides on it and one sharp, so I can do this with it. Since the pattern doesn't have much draft to it, I just coat the crap out of the thing in baby powder, talcum powder. It helps as a release agent. It helps in fill in all the imperfections. Definitely helps it release a lot easier. Okay. Looks okay. By doing this, I can cause any part that's going to break to break off, and then when I put it back together and ram it up for normal, then I don't have to worry. Probably wondering why I don't use the sock and stuff. I just don't have one. I literally never wear socks, so unless I'm casting. So that's why. Don't have any extra spares. The 
reason this one failed before, one, I poured way too cold so it didn't want to flow, and two, it was a short pour. My crucible wasn't big enough to fill the sprue and the meth pattern. Most people use bentonite clay and stuff in their sands, the green sand. This sand here, I went super cheap. It is play sand that was on sale for like $2 a bag and the cheapest non-scented kitty litter there was. Kitty litter is actually a mixture of clays which it is called Montmorillonite. If you check it out, bentonite clay, there's multiple types of bentonite. There's calcium, sodium bentonite, and a few others. They all make up a category called Montmorillonite, which is this, which is kitty litter. So, it's a lot of work to grind it up to a powder, but it works pretty well. The only thing is you can't use it for high temperature stuff like copper and bronze, really high temperature bronze and cast iron because the other clays in it will actually flux and will melt. But for aluminum, brass, normal bronzes, it works perfectly fine. In case everybody was wondering about adding pouring troughs and stuff, I don't do that. Usually I pour right at the side of it and let the capillary action of the metal flow into the mold. That way it's not dropping all the way down in. It works perfectly fine for me anyways. You just don't have, you just got to be a little more skilled at pouring. That's all. I had a little bit bigger trough this time, or bigger runner this time, because that choked a little too hard last time, and I wasn't sure it was going to fill. And this crucible is heavy, I'd rather not be standing there holding it.
put some vents through the top so it had a place for the air to go. Um, everything looks good. I think we're good. Oh man, is this thing heavy. Okay, we're on. That'll be the last time. Time to go pour. Or wait till tomorrow then pour. It's supposed to be nice out. Too many trouble or too many problems with the other burner, the oil burner right now. I just need to tear it apart and clean it again. So for now I'm just gonna use a little furnace burner that'll work for just melting the aluminum. It's melting pretty fast now. One of the most common questions I get asked with an oil burner, how do you test for the atmosphere in it? The easiest way to do it, stick a piece of galvanized steel on the rim like this. This is not just a piece of aluminum, but same concept. Leave it set there for a few minutes, come back. If you're running rich, it'll leave soot on it. If you're running oxidizing, it'll eat this galvanizing off, burn it off, you end up with a white powder and white smoke coming off of it, just a little tiny bit. And if it does nothing at all, you're running neutral. That's how you tell with an oil burner.
it this way. a little hotter than normal because I wanted that mold to fill but that bur propane burner runs rich which is no good for aluminum so it does make it a little more gassy but that's why I double key gassed or degassed twice but it's really good for doing bronze and st copper alloys because with it running rich it will you won't have any porosity in the copper castings or the bronze brass bronze copper alloys aluminum you want oxidizing or neutral my oil burner I could tune a lot easier and yeah it was having trouble so we got propane this time okay It's still pretty warm, but it should be solid now. It's been about a half hour to 45 minutes. Sand was a little drier than I really would have liked, but it worked, I think, hopefully. That's why I dampened the parting line so that I could get it to stick a little better. I didn't have to worry about it breaking trying to mold the thing up. We got a full ring this time. That's a plus. Reinforce the top of the core or the green sand core. Looks like it may have filled all the way up, including the top. flashing around the outside. This will be trued up on the lathe, I think. But, 
and this filled in because I had to redo that core on the top, but that's easy enough to remove on the lathe. I had problems with venting last time, so I added four vents right here on top. That seemed to have fixed it in by pouring a little hotter. Looks decent. Not the best, but once machined up, it'll be more than good enough. Okay, I had some mold breakage around the outside. I had to keep fiddling with it and it, yeah, that's why it's got flashing around the outside, big bits of flashing there. But nothing the flap wheel on the grinder won't fix. I'd say that's pretty good though. Okay, I was starting to hog this out with the die grinder. There's not much there and broke the die grinder, so I'll tear that apart and fix it. I think the collet assembly came undone from the shaft. But I think it looks pretty good. I just cleaned up the outside, all the flashing off of it. It still needs to be faced off here and bored out because the I added material for machining allowances on both this face, inside, and this one because it's going to fit over this here. So I got a bit of material to remove. That's why I did that. But it looks okay. I had a little bit of sand wash right here, but I don't think I'll worry about that in all honesty. Because once it's set up, it's going to be like this, and you'll never see it. I don't know it's there, but I might just take the die grinder when it's fixed and just touch it up. But it turned out okay. Pattern. Should have all the parts for the die grinder or the tool cutter grinder now. Hopefully. There's the backstop arm. Pulley blank for the motor. Pulley blank for spindle spindle hub assembly. And I just took the flap wheel and cleaned that up. So, I think it looks pretty good. But yeah, that should be all the castings I need now. Hey, right, thanks for watching. See ya.
I know one thing. When I go to machine this part up, definitely gonna have to wear her earring, her hearing protection. Otherwise, I'm gonna go deaf.